Good evening. My name is John Pacano. I am a member of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission staff, and I am the Environmental Project Manager responsible for the Southeast Market Pipeline Pro Pipelines Project Environmental Review. With me tonight are Harry Jetty, uh, Bill Braun, Mitch Shields, and Monica Hagebeck Davis. On behalf of the five members of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we'd like to thank you for participating in tonight's public comment meeting on the draft environmental impact statement for the Southeast Market Pipelines project. The purpose of tonight's meeting is for us, the Commission staff, to receive comments from you. Oh, it didn't work. Excuse me, that PowerPoint didn't go like it should have. There we go. The purpose of tonight's meeting is for us, the Commission staff, to receive comments from the public on the draft environmental impact statement we prepared for the Southeast Markets Pipelines Project. The Southeast Market Pipelines Project, or the SMP project, is actually three separate but connected natural gas transmission pipeline projects that would involve facilities in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. The Transcontinental Gas Pipeline Company, Sable Trail Transmission, and the Florida Southeast Connection proposed to construct and operate about 650 miles of natural gas pipeline, associated facilities, and six new compressor stations to transport up to 1.1 billion <coughs> cubic feet of natural gas per day from Alabama to Florida. Facilities in Georgia uh, include, in, actually, excuse me, in Georgia, Sable Trail proposes to construct and operate approximately 162 miles of pipeline across Stewart, Webster, Terrell, Lee, Doherty, Mitchell, Colquitt, Brooks, and Lowndes counties. This pipeline will be co located with existing infrastructure, primarily the Southern Natural Gas Transmission Pipeline, for approximately 112 miles. Additionally, Sable Trail proposes to construct one new compressor station in Albany, Georgia. Lastly, Sable Trail proposes to construct two takeoff points in Doherty and Mitchell counties. These takeoffs would, could facilitate future natural gas related development and service. Additional information on the projects can be found at www.ferc.gov. The FERC C Library is the Commission's administrative record and contains copies of the three applications and all supplemental information provided. The eLibrary can be accessed through the website www.ferc.gov. eLibrary also contains copies of our correspondence with other state and federal agencies, comments and letters submitted by affected landowners and concerned citizens, and our requests to the applicants for additional environmental information. In the over 1,000 comments we received on this project, many of them expressed concern about the use of natural gas in Georgia. Georgia is the 13th largest consumer of natural gas in the U.S. and has in 2013 produced no natural gas. Natural gas consumption in Georgia is supplied by the Interstate Natural Gas Transmission System. The National Environmental Policy Act requires the Commission to conduct an environmental review of all interstate natural gas transmission pipeline projects. The SMP draft EIS, which was issued on September 4, 2015, and sent to over 6,000 individuals and parties, was prepared in response to applications filed by the three companies in the fall of 2014. Commission staff worked for over 10 months to prepare this draft EIS. These 10 months are in addition to the year spent working in the pre filing process. In total, almost two years have been spent on this environmental review. An environmental impact statement is an informational document. It is not a decisional document. A decision about this project has not been made. The EIS's purpose is to inform the Commission about the potential impacts on the human and natural environments that could result from construction and operation of the projects. An environmental impact statement describes the environment as it exists today, the potential impacts on the environment, assesses and compares alternatives, and includes staff's recommendations to avoid minimize and mitigate potential impacts. Specifically, the draft EIS, which I have a copy of up here and there are CD versions available out in the hallway, includes an executive summary, an introduction, which describes the purpose and need of the project, as well as the purpose and scope of the environmental review, descriptions of the proposed actions, including proposed facilities, land requirements, construction procedures, and environmental compliance monitoring, 
includes environmental analysis of geology, soils, water resources, groundwater, wetlands, vegetation, wildlife, uh, fisheries and aquatic resources, special status species, land use, visual resources, socioeconomics, in, uh, impacts on property values, environmental justice, cultural resources, air quality and noise, pressure station emissions, reliability and safety, pipeline integrity, safety standards and cumulative impacts, alternatives, conclusions and recommendations, and 14 appendices that address maps, drawings, construction plans and references. This draft EIS summarizes our comprehensive environmental review of the project and includes our conclusions and recommendations concerning the potential impacts on the environment resulting from construction and operation of the proposed SMP project. As I said before, the Commission issued the SMP draft EIS on September 4, 2015. This began a 45-day comment period which closed on October 26. In addition to the comments we will receive later this evening, I expect the Commission will receive numerous written and electronic comments. Comments received, whether they be verbal, written, or electronic, are treated the same. There is no preference given to one type of comment over the other. All comments received will be addressed in the final environmental impact statement. Comments may result in additional analysis and revisions to the draft environmental impact statement. As a reminder, comments can be provided verbally tonight in written form and submitted via U.S. mail to the Secretary of the Commission or electronically via the FERC website www.ferc.gov. For your convenience, we have also provided comment forms in the hallway that you can fill out and leave with us tonight. After receiving comments on the draft environmental impact statement, we will prepare a final environmental impact statement. Ultimately, the FERC commissioners will determine whether or not to approve the SMP project. This decision will be made after a careful review of the applications. The final environmental impact statement will consider all public comments submitted on the project. As stated in the meeting notice issued along with the draft EIS, in order to make this meeting as fair and efficient as possible, we will be in portion three minute time limit. Your three minutes will start when you begin speaking. At two minutes and 30 seconds, the green light will change from, from green to yellow. At two minutes and 45 seconds, the yellow light will turn to red. At three minutes, the alarm will sound. I recognize the choice each of you have made to be here tonight and respect the fact that you are taking time away from your lives and your families. Given the number of speakers we have, after the, the folks that have signed in to speak, I'll open it back up for other speakers and give everyone who's had an opportunity to speak uh, another three minutes to speak. The Commission values your comments, and I want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak tonight. This is a very important part of the process. Your comments are being recorded and will be entered in the Commission's administrative record. If you'd like a written copy of tonight's meeting, you can speak to our reporter after the meeting, or you can download a copy once it's been placed in the Commission's record. Before we hear from the first speaker, just a reminder to silence your cell phones. And with that, we'll hear from the first speaker, 